What's going on, everybody? We back at it again. Episode Trace at Kickback at Dames. I said at before Kickback at Dames, but fuck it, we here. I got a very special guest today, man, who goes to the rhythm of his own drum. But before we begin, I'm gonna let the homie introduce himself, and then we gonna get to it. All right, my name is Bongo Mo, North Carolina zone. Non dime in this bitch. For sure, you feel for me? Sure. Thank y'all for pulling up. You know what I mean. This is something slight. Every person that I have on here, I ask them three questions. Three questions is, who are you? What you do? Why do you do it? Talk to me. All right. Well, my name is Bongo Mo. I'm from Wallace, North Carolina. Uh, what I do is I rap, make music. Why? is because I just feel like it's not as much honesty in music as once before. Like as far as in hip hop, still a little in R&B, but ain't really too many hip hoppers like that. Stop the cap. Facts. As far as honesty, what does honesty mean to you when it comes to the music? Like <clears throat> a lot of people just rap about like the glitz and glamor, not the process of getting to it. You got people who are rap about used to sell drugs, but Nobody talk about like the things in your own head, you know what I'm saying? You just see it on the end when like so and so artists killed themselves, you know, it was tragic, something like that, but you could talk about it. Mm. That's kind of what a cult following is. They know that you live in it with them, like they feel like they're part of it. Yeah. Like people just be focused so much on the destination and forget about the process. Cause it's like once they get there, they lose mm -hmm. sight of what it took to right. get there. And right. when it comes to people like us, you know what I'm saying? We listening to them, we trying to get game. And it's like hard to get game if you talk mm -hmm. about if what you, you already did. All the time. <laughs> you feel me? So, right. and you be dropping hella gems, man, effortlessly, for real, for real, on the track. Right. But I wanted to tap into, man, our collaboration for my upcoming album, Damien. We had collaborated on a song called Ego For Sale. No, we gods in disguise, the rhymes is heaven sent. I did a lot of sin and guess I should repent. Ego, I ain't got one, so that to keep the lights on. It's hard to write a verse and keep tears off the phone. My daughter Basically, long story short, uh, with my nigga Bongo, man, I had to, I always got to bring it back to the roots. You feel me? Uh, whether that's like the main element or pieces mm -hmm. of the whole recipe. You feel me? Talk to the people about your experience as far as pulling up, because you brought the queen as well. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just, you know, let them know what was the experience like. Sure, pulling always, up. Uh, always smooth. Every time I get in with you, man, it's always just like smooth, straight line. Ain't too much Love. bullshit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Might be a little little sprinkle of bullshit, but I'm gonna clean it up though. Man. I'm gonna clean it up. Most of the time, that's be, it'd be out of our control. Like, yeah, yeah, facts. It don't be like pull up. I got a session ready, and then you not there or something. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, no, I can't do like that. that. Yeah. No, I, I respect you too much, bro. But, I respect you too much for that shit. I got it's just always love, bro. And then you always let me like, no matter what song it is, it's like it's always something where it's like. You don't gotta be somebody else to hop on this one. You know what I'm uh, saying? Oh God, I want Bongo Mo, my right. nigga. That's who I want on the mm -hmm. tracks. And like, it's crazy that you say that because for the track Ego For Sale, I specifically made that for us yeah. in mind. You feel right. me? Cause I was just like, all right, how can I find a way to bring back that element of hip hop, but also kinda up tempo, but not too much to where mm -hmm. it's kind of like trap in a sense, like the regular radio 120 right, right. BPM type shit. I wanted to kind of stick to our roots because we minimalistic when we collaborate. You feel me? So I wanted it to be minimalistic, but still add different shit, but it's not too far fetched. Right. You feel me? And I even remember when uh, Michael Rumpel first met you in person and like after we did the session and shit, he was like, bruh, I fuck with Bongo, man. He <laughs> I told like, her, as soon as I yeah. seen the cheetah shirt and the shorts, I looked over, I was like, oh yeah, this shit about to be lit. Yeah. It's about to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, man, shout out to Michael Rumpel, bro. Yeah. Like he definitely, definitely is a genius, man. He's a good dude. That for sure was, a, it was a chill last session. We got to crack jokes, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Got to work. 
and um it was smooth and thank y'all again for pulling up man mm-hmm. for real that meant mm-hmm. a lot that meant a lot and i feel like uh when it comes to collaborations man it's nothing like having that in person interaction Facts. you feel me because it's like we could have easily sent mm-hmm. each other the emails yeah, we, we, we did them before yeah. you know and we did that before. and that's yeah. okay mm-hmm. but when you have that balance of doing that but also it's that's like bro that's my nigga. same time you feel me it's like bro that's my nigga. we could link up and just mm-hmm. chop it up and talk you feel yeah. me so i think that's what it's really about at the end of the day man just um continuing to cultivate those relationships within the game but we go we gonna get into that exactly. later on man but um yo how did we first meet from your perspective real rap. this has been we, a long ass i'm about to say real rap now when we first met i think you had a lacrosse jersey on bro facts bro, with my brother brandon or whatever. damn oh yeah then i met you again at boost I yeah forgot where y'all went in boost but on the music tip yeah. my brother just told me he was like when I had um, cause this is when you and Jones was still in K two, you know. What yeah, I'm yeah. I, think, I forgot what the name of the song was, but I had peeped the video and I was like, "Yo, ain't this homie that was playing lacrosse?" Yeah, my brother, was like, yeah, man, you gotta get in with him or whatever. Yeah. So it was really more him looking out, like he yeah. already, you know, we both his brothers, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, yeah, why not? Shout out to Brandon for that, man. He yeah, all the way yeah. out in Arizona, living his best life and mm-hmm. shit. But um, damn, it's been years. Years, years. I remember when I was out in the birds with my mom, bro. Yeah, that's we was sitting on the me. roof. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we yeah. was sitting on the roof, and then motherfucking um, <laughs> when we would like collaborate with Jones, mm-hmm. he had his shit. Uh, Scott Born, you know what I mean. It was me, you, Jones, yeah. AP, goddamn, Dang. yeah. <laughs> his story, psych history, right. nigga, not his story. But um, damn, it's been a long ass time, and we still going at it, bro. Mm-hmm. Still going at it. Ain't no need to stop. Ain't no need. Oh yeah, shout out to my nigga Bongo, the coolest nigga alive, the first smoker on the podcast. Oh, you dig? Oh man, it's only give right. Fuck. It's only right. You know what I mean? But um, let's tap into it, man. I want to tap into the origin of Bongo Mo, man. Who? was bongo before the music came about oh man i was a smart little fella until i came still up. smart man. <laughs> still until smart. i came to durham I made crazy decisions <laughs> but uh durham will do that shit to I you mean, <laughs> i think bongo mo really started when when my son was born it was like it's time to make a change mm. i'm building another man you know what i'm yeah. saying he gotta be able to look out for the little ones behind him or whatnot yeah. first job Second, second, second yeah. gotcha. but you know, with your daughter, it's like I just gotta be there and love the hell out of Provide. her. Because, mm-hmm. You know how that can be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but yeah, with my son, I took on nonviolence principles. Mm. Um, tried to became Rastafarian. Yeah, and I took Bongo from Bongo Wato. He one of the originators of the Rastafarian culture. Mm. So I took that from him, and then Mo. Everybody always said like he always just do his own thing. He know everybody, but it could be a room full of people I know, and they over here on the left corner, and I'm gonna go chill on the right by myself. Facts, like, facts. Whoever wanna come rock, you know what I'm saying? Cool. I love all y'all, but yeah, just too different. You gonna do your own shit. Mm-hmm. Facts. And explain um what it is to be a uh, Rastafarian man, because it's a lot of people who only know the surface level shit. Right, right. You feel me? Like break it down in your own way what it meant to you and why you became Rastafari. The, the first thing I would say is like, a lot of people look at it as like another religion or like a lot of guys just do as they excuse to smoke, but. Mm. Deeper than that. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to give them too much. Too much, yeah. Then they're going to be running around saying it. You know? Yeah, facts. And then it's, it's a different type of Rastas. Like you got mm. Christian Rastas, you got Rastas that believe Halasalasi I was God, you right. know, or what a reincarnation. Yeah. But I more believe like righteousness is within us. Mm. It's just your choices on, you know, your deeds, what you going to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Balance. Yeah. So the higher power is internal, not external. Facts. Yeah. yeah. Facts. I, f- I fuck with that. The game is sold separately. We ain't going to give y'all too much on that. Mm-hmm. But just wanted to clarify for those out there, you know, who say they think they know what it is, but right. they don't live it. You feel me? But my nigga right here living, he about that shit. So when it came to 
having the son, right? Mm-hmm. And you saying that that was your trajectory of that's when you became Bongo Mo. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was even I was doing music then, still calling myself Bongo Mo, but it wasn't really solidified, right? It yeah. wasn't real, you know. I'm making music. Then I was making music for like from the sense of what you think people like. Mm. Sometimes, I mean, whoever your favorite artist is, when you listen to their album, mm. it's for you songs on there and it's for them songs on there too. Facts. Because you gotta, your best artists don't care if you like it or not. Yeah. They know that you gonna like it because you like them. Like I'm drawing you, I'm pulling you in. It's mm. a whole world. I'm not just a person on a microphone no more. Right. Right, I mean, right, and no, uh, and that's one thing I can say about listening to your music, man. It's like listening to that shit. It feels like you sitting down with you, chopping it up. You feel me? And it's just amazing how um, you're able to use your words to create vivid pictures. Right, but it's not imaginary pictures. It's reality. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Who were your influences, man, before this shit became solidified? Like, who did you receive? Um, not necessarily one person, but you know what I'm saying? Who did you study to kind of cultivate Bongo Mo to what it is? The person I studied the most is probably John Coltrane, bro. Mm. Like, I used to just, I had a band director. Mm. He used to always throw me John Coltrane, like, make the CDs himself. Yeah. So I don't even know what I'm listening to. Yeah. Just going through all that culture and culture and culture. Yeah. That is kind of where my rap style came from, like cadence wise. Mm-hmm. I'm a whatever the beat doing is what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. But a little swing gotta, to it. Yeah, you gotta have a hell of five perception of time type shit. Bro. Yeah. But you 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 low key bending time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Manipulating time. With shit. Living off borrowed time, the clock tick faster. Yeah. yeah. Nah, facts, bro. Like, nah, when I definitely when I I peep now that you saying John Coltrane because it makes sense because you know what I'm saying with jazz, your voice is the instrument. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Which is why you choose to rap on like minimalistic shit because you know your voice can right. carry right. the song itself, and you know how to bend time to where they may think they know what's coming next, but it's like ah, got you, nigga. Mm-hmm. So yeah, exactly. That's exactly. fire, man. That's fire. So with John Coltrane, like you said, Doom, right? Mm-hmm. Take us into, I don't want to say the first song, but we all as artists, we have that one project, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like we consider the first for real project. What would you say like your first for real project? It may even be something where like the public may not know about, you feel me? But like something that you created, it could be in the vault, it could be out already. But what was that moment to where after you made that collection, you was like, bruh, we lit. I think Adventures of High Guy, bro. The High Guy mixtape on mm. that piff. Mm. Right around that time, bro, like I had everything. You was talking your shit on it. How too. I wanted that mud to be, mm. skits, everything. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. I, I think that was the one. And then I really feel like it probably took till drop off. That's another joint on that piff. Mm. For people kind of seeing the picture for real, yeah. you know, a lot of people just be like, oh, bro, you lyrical as hell. You on that J. Cole. And I'd be like, not <laughs> really. Niggas always want to compare like, J. Cole when you from North Carolina. Right, yeah, like, real quick. That ain't oh, the only nigga You sound like you from New York because you lyrical. Like, nah, mm-hmm. these country folk struggles. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. They don't, they don't, they don't mm-hmm. ever talk about Goody Mob. They don't ever nice. talk about Nappy Roots, Outkast, mm-hmm. like, the whole AT Aliens, man. Like, not saying that that was the shapeshifter of our culture, but for the South, they helped put us on the map to Facts. where they don't just see us as like, we just talk slow, we slow, and they don't think all we, we do all is- that James. You know what I'm saying? Like, for so, real, bro. But, you know, shout out, shout out to the, um, to the ancestors as well as the legends, nice. living or dead, you feel me? Not dead, but just not here with us physically that helped put this out for us, man. So, where, are you from? Because in your music, you rep that non dime mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's tap into that. I'm oh, yeah. from I'm from Wallace, North Carolina. It's a little small town, and we call it Dirt City because yeah, our main attraction is the, the little outdoor flea market we got. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, everybody like, going there getting fruit, vegetables, that's like mall all types right of man. Yeah. yeah. And Walmart, you ain't gonna meet no girl if you don't go to Walmart where I'm oh, from. Oh God. Like oh God. <laughs> you in the house, bro. You ain't, it's not happening for yeah. you. Yeah. 
<laughs> Word up. For real. I'm going to meet you at Walmart. I'm going to be mm-hmm. right there in a little real bit. Real quick. For real, dog. <laughs> so how was it staying inspired in that environment? Because a lot of people, it's easy. You know what I'm saying? Especially down in the South. We see it Fact. a lot to where what other people may think is settling, it's just we're comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We content. For real though, man, my mom's used to like make me read. Mm-hmm. Like she wouldn't give me something like read this whole book, mm-hmm. but she might give me like a chapter of like anything. Yeah. W.E.B. Du Bois, yeah. Langston Hughes. Just Shout out to Miss Brenda. Like she gonna give you, she gonna make you read something. Mm-hmm. She probably gonna ask you about it too. Yeah. So I was already on the like, it's something more, you know what I'm saying? That was already mm-hmm. in me. Mentally. Then, like I said, even, well, even before, my, now that I think about it, before my band director was giving me the John Coltrane, because mm-hmm. I played saxophone too. Right. But what made me want to play saxophone, bro, is fucking Bill Clinton. Damn. Yeah, bro. Elaborate on that. He was playing. Uh, I was watching TV with my grandma in the morning. My mom had to work. Yeah. And white dude over playing the saxophone. I'm like, damn, I don't know who that is, but that's cold right there. Yeah, yeah. Shades on the whole nine. Yeah. So I already knew, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be in music some way. And when I told my mom, shit, my mom's put me right on the piano. Like I told her that. Mm-hmm. But then it, that was the summer before school started. Yeah. I was already playing piano. And already. I did that up until just so I didn't know how to read music or whatever. Yeah. As soon as I got right in there, what, sixth grade? Yeah. To me, just threw that saxophone in my hand, well, no looking back. Good. Right Damn. So, so the fact that musically you was already inclined before mm-hmm. you even tapped into hip hop. Hell yeah. Man, so do you feel like a lot of shit, just as we were saying with the voice being your instrument, do you feel like that's more of a conscious thing or a subconscious thing or both? Both. Both? Both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, like one thing I always argue, like no matter, if, if you like a form of hip hop, mm-hmm. the best ones at it is talking about something. Mm. Cadence wise, I mean, I don't even want to name them. It's too many of them. Like, <laughs> the list is crazy. Yeah, yeah. But if you really looking at the top people, mm. their content and the way they deliver their content is not like what we think people like. Yeah, for real though. Yeah, what what you would think people like as far as just becoming an artist, you're probably gonna jump right into something around the trap music realm. Yeah, that ain't Kendrick. That ain't Cole. That ain't Drake. Mm-hmm. Wasn't really Dr. Dre and Easy in them because when you look at how they were doing their music, it was gangster rap. But cadence wise, delivery wise, the subject matter of mm-hmm. yeah, it's just drugs and crime. But when they dive in so deep, it's like you a part of NWA now. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, that's how powerful our culture mm-hmm. is, man. That's, that's why it's talking. one of the the biggest commodities in the world now. You feel me? And I feel like. Um, it's sad because on a business perspective, I feel like a lot of people that's working in corporate, they feel like they make more money carbon copying the littles, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like what's hot now, because just as they fizz out, you could find another place to rep- uh, replace them. Right. You feel me? But right. when it comes to legend like us, you feel me? And I said that shit, what's up? We owning it, nigga. Um, it takes time. They feel like it takes more money and effort. But that's why we live in a great age today, Mm. because we can do this shit ourselves. So let's tap into that, man. Like I always peeped how you move on the independent route. How important is that to you? Honestly, now Mm. it's like I haven't even, it's it's not like some million dollar deal being lingered out there or nothing like that, but Mm. what's the need for it for real? Like most of the guys that signed the big deal they videos just look better. That's all. Now, with the type of music I make, what I need to do for you to go rent the Lambo, slide it out here, Yeah, I can just call the people myself and rent one if I want to do that. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Like, hey, look. Why it, do you need I feel them, though? <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like, you can get me to more people, but mm-hmm. the more serious you take promotion, whether it be on foot, you know what I'm saying, yeah. door to door, yeah. or on the internet, mm-hmm. the more you do, the better your results. Yeah. Just promote more. Thank you for saying right. that example too, bro. Because dead ass for my video Lush with Sunny. Hell yeah. All we did, bro, we did first of all, I paid for everything out of pocket. 
when watching the video, because I don't want to give niggas too much game, yeah, yeah, you feel yeah. me? But watching the video, of course, it looks like extravagant. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. It was only a couple hundred dollars, yo. Facts. I, community is important, mm -hmm. you feel me? All I did was- Use your brain, man. Come on, and if connections. You, if you know what you want, most time when you got that one song, like, oh, bro, we got to do a video. Mm -hmm. You already see it in your head. Yeah. Go to the store and bring that joint to light. Come they on. got Amazon all day. Come on, now. Build, you know what I'm saying? Build it up. Yeah. Lay it out how you want it. No matter how long it take to get to it, music don't die. At all. Right. At all. Do you feel like quality and quantity can coexist? Or do you feel like it has to be one or the other? It depends. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think, like, Kendrick, go. Yeah. But I feel like it's a reason, like, him personally, that's not in him to be every month I'm going to drop an album. Like, yeah. like somebody like Currency would do. Yeah. But he still caters to his following. Mm. Now, I mean, if, if you got all the ducks in a row, you make a certain type of music that's maybe not as content driven. I mean, you could drop every week if you wanted to, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. you just go in there, just jumping around, wilding out, yeah. whatever hot right now, I'm gonna make something like that. Yeah. And you could pump them out real quick. Yeah. But when you, you know what I'm saying, if really invested, like if it's raining outside, I don't feel like writing. Like, mm -hmm. When you like that, because I'm I'm like that. Like if it's too late, I probably ain't even want to write. Yeah, like I don't I, feel like getting out of it, bed. It'll be beats that I hear early in the morning. I love them. Yeah, but the ones I heard, the same 10, 12 beats I heard, I played them last night. And I couldn't find none. Hell no. Nah. So That's when you weird. investing in it like that, like when it really, when you really live and breathe it, it's different. Like mm -hmm. if you just pumping them out, you know what I'm saying you trying to make money. Yeah, you yeah. could do that. Like, yeah. You could pump them out, but like I said, if you if you really invested all the way in, you gonna need time because you gotta go live a little. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the so that's why like, it's how you possible, make but mm -hmm. just depending on the type of artist you are. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, and that's real, bro. Because um, just artists, I feel like people lose sight of that reality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's easy to be sold to dreams, easy to sell dreams, right. but like you said, you hit it on the head, bro. Like we gotta live. You feel me? We gotta be able to. That's unprofessional as hell, my bad. I'm telling everybody yeah, to put their phones off and shit, my <laughs> shit, huh? But um, we gonna keep that bitch in the motherfucking video too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but no, dead ass though, you gotta live, bro. That's how you create content. Mm -hmm. That's how, you know, you can stay sane, bro. And you get more shit to talk about. Like the niggas that's automatically pumping. Mm -hmm. What the hell are they really talking about? Right though. You feel right me? Right though. <laughs> Or you would be listening to an artist you like. And then mm -hmm. if you hearing the songs piece by piece, like when they hitting you with the singles from the album and then you learn the whole album, he played it out like singles and then gave it to you as an album a year later. <laughs> yeah. So, cause that's what they do, bro. That's the mainstream game now. Oh, so God. after he do that, then you be like, damn, these songs all sound the same, like the same song mm -hmm. when it plays in one line. But when you heard them separate, you was in love with them. Like, yeah. Yeah. Great. Cause this might be like one in... One in January, mm. then he'll hit you in March, then he'll yeah. hit you again to the end of the summer. Yeah. You know, he spread it out on you and keep you invested. Mm -hmm. But then when you just get it all at one time, that's why I like to drop albums. Like, cause I think it's better for you to listen to me all at one time. Cause you ain't gonna know where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. Cause like I said, you gotta live a little. So where I'm at in life might not make sense to you until it's like you hear the progression of an album. Mm. And I'm like, oh, okay. Mm whole story and I ain't even know it. Yeah, make make people appreciate your absence, yo. Because mm -hmm. when um you on the scene too much, that's when niggas become common, for sure. Um, Speaking of albums, local. Oh, man. Bitch, I'm living off my class lyrics. Look, I'm Bitch, I'm living off my cool ass lyrics. Let's talk about local, man. Let's talk about the inspiration behind the name, because local is an actual ac acronym, right? Yeah. Living yeah, off my cool for? ass lyrics. Living off my cool ass lyrics, man. Take us into the creative process, man, where you knew, like, I want to do this. Okay. Uh, really? I think it's because of where I'm from, like, mm -hmm. as far as just North Carolina, period. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think the problem with North Carolina, for real, as far as music go, mm -hmm. the problem with us is like, we don't represent where we from, like how I say nine dime, like, yeah. cause I'm happy to be from here. Yeah. But it ain't really dividing me from the rest of North Carolina. Like you'll never hear me say like 910 versus everybody. Cause yeah. 
North Carolina need each other. Like we do, bro. We it'll never be somebody that's like really homegrown, found out about while he was really here. Mm-hmm. What really happens is like they go on that pipeline. They might hit New York, mm-hmm. might hit Atlanta, something like that, Florida. Get noticed, and it's like, oh, where are you from? And then they revert back because yeah. it's like, yo, this is where I'm from. You asked me, so now I'm gonna tell you. Exactly. If we all was just like North Carolina, then we would have an actual market for music. As long as we separate, we don't. Like yeah. we just got people who could put us in better situations, but it ain't no conglomerate. Like mm. it, no, it ain't no community. Yeah. Yeah. That's real. So speaking on the conglomerate, before we even get to local mm-hmm. and tap into that, let's speak on your conglomerate, family first. Right. Where did that come about? Shoot, man, just a lot of homies. Um, I used to have my own studio. Yeah. A lot of homies was coming over. Started getting tight in real life versus mm-hmm. just coming over here to record or whatever. Yeah. Decided to start something up, man. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, shit, now, man, we was all in the same place, so it's different now, you know? Yeah. Kind of one man in it. We got one dude battling. Mm-hmm. That's Nikosi, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my yeah. man Kosi That nigga is vicious. Crazy yeah. with it. Crazy with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he battling. Yeah. yeah, his brother Crisis up there doing podcasts in New York. Word. So yeah. we all still making moves, but yeah. getting back together to record, like we like to do shit in person. You know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah. So that's yeah. like the, the main thing right now. It's like I'm waiting. I'm just ready for the moment when the stars align. Yeah, we could do a joint venture again, bro. Mm-hmm. Everybody on their shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah, but that's 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 dope though. The yeah. fact that y'all can still have that conglomerate mm-hmm. but still go out yeah. and do what it is that's that because all the gears, if all the gears ain't, you know, turning, man, the yeah. whole won't work. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So going back to local, mm-hmm. I felt like how you broke that down when it came to the conglomerate of Family First and how you like to do things in person and it has to be organic. Exactly. That's the vibe that I got from local. Mm-hmm. I could tell listening to it that it wasn't like factory made. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was right. homegrown. Mm-hmm. It was it was organic. How were you able to create the acronym living off my cool ass lyrics and create a whole conceptual project from it. I was going to call it local, dead ass. Yeah. I was going to call it local. Yeah. Just pl- flat out local, no acronym, nothing. Mm-hmm. Just from the standpoint, I wanted to make something that's like, it's really a rapper's rapper album. Yeah. But you can listen to it naked ear and feel it too, like even if you was a carpenter. Because mm-hmm. if you a carpenter in a local area, it's going to be you. And all these new guys trying to move in. You've been here for 20 years doing your mm-hmm. thing locally. And now this guy just got his degree. He 26 or something, you know what I'm saying? Love Fresh it. out. Yeah. He going to try to come take over. He got all these new ideas. Right. But what's, you know, you still tried and true to yours. Mm-hmm. I kind of try to think about it like that. Yeah. But I don't think I would have been able to make it. Like I was going through some self-doubt for real. Like, yeah. Just really was like an emotional time for me. So I think that's really like how I was able to do it. Like it was just a thought, but then life started happening. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where you feel like that self doubt came from? Age, well, I, man. I, age. Yeah, age. Yeah. And then I mean, if you had to put a pin and I'ma live by what I am as far as how I rap, yeah, it would probably be like a backpacker, a backpacker. Excuse me, mm. boom bat. You know what I'm saying? So the market is not good for us right mm. now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, not too many people care about what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, they just want to feel the nobody shit. Nobody really want to be taken anywhere emotionally through rap no more either. Like, yeah. unless it's, you know, I'm rage or something, you know, I'm something <laughs> angry, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, no, nobody try to go through the whole diagram, like, how the whole thing go. Yeah. Like, that's really what local is, just emotional roller coaster. Mm. Ups to down. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I love how you're able to highlight just even the word local alone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because especially, I don't know why, but within the hip hop community, bro, it's always looked down upon to be exactly. a local rapper, That's local this. But you you took something negative and turned it into mm-hmm. something positive. And that's powerful, bro. Right that's powerful, man. Um, I wanted to speak on one of my favorite songs from the album, man. Hold on. 
Oh, Dog. Fuck drowning in your sorrows, fly away. Let's take another trip. Well, roll another stick, cause we always off the piff. Humble nigga from a humble town. Still step up to your stoop, get that up and let through. See, y'all did it for clout. I just did. Like, damn, that was some. Mm. That was powerful. Like, just, it really felt like I was watching everything. It felt like a yeah. movie, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. the one line that stood out to me, I may not be saying it verbatim, but just how you said, um, you know, my son watching me bag weed, but it's only weed because I don't yeah. want to go anywhere. I want to stay. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, yeah, bro, yeah. take us there. Like how, what? what? It's, it's like sometimes you got to do wrong to be able to get that little extra so you can do whatever you need to do. You know what yeah. I'm saying? One day, man, I'm in the kitchen. The son walked in on me and I was ashamed. It's like, damn, bro. Yeah. Like, Basically, like no matter how hard you try, sometimes mm. things can still go awry. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. But that was what I was doing at the time, trying to make do. Mm. But it ain't no glory in that, bro. Yeah. Like, what yeah. you gonna leave your kids for real? How they gonna learn from you if that's all? If that's your only layer? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. yeah, I had to learn perseverance, boy. But that's that's why the name of the song is "Hold On." Though. Yeah, like, the sample was just timely for mm -hmm. real. Bro. Yeah, no, and that's and I I'm glad you said that, man, because a lot of shit like that people create it in a sense to where it is glorified. Mm -hmm. But in the delivery, I heard the pain, right? Like I heard just the reality mm -hmm. of it, man. That's why I love your artistry, bro, because you're gonna give us the good, right. you're gonna give us the great, but you also gonna give us that real. Mm -hmm. People usually say bad, ugly, but it's that real, bro. Yeah. And um, it's it's needed, man. It's needed. What would you say was the songs that you connected with the most on the project? Mm, definitely hold on. Mm. The intro and the outro, because the whole thing is really laid out in the intro with that. Uh, I'm trying to go hard. Mm -hmm. They're trying to kill me before I start. Yeah. Like, feet bleeding, I ain't ran a yard. Yeah. Have the people around you that you was like, hella tight with before you started rapping. It's yeah. like they all fizzled away because it's like now I got a plan on what I'm going to do and yeah. how I'm going to attack my situation. Mm -hmm. They dislike you for it. Yeah. You ain't even did shit yet. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I mean like back like when you was scribbling on a desk in middle school type yeah. shit. Like yeah. they already don't like you. Bro, this is not even rap yet. I'm like trying to figure <laughs> poetry out. You feel yeah. Me? Like, yeah. Shit like that though. Like, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of it if you can get past that first little the introduction or whatever it is you want to do with your life, yeah, you gonna have them people like, oh man, you can't be a banker, man. Like, yeah, you want to own a bank or yeah, you want to do music or mm -hmm. yeah. anything, bro. Facts. It's people that go to school to be lawyers and their family tell them no. Like that's real. That's real. Do this. Do something mm -hmm. safe. Yeah. Right on. And then what's even crazier, man? What I really uh liked about the project itself is the cover. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of just brought me back to like them days where mm -hmm. we just used to be outside. Right, your you know pure self, bro. Like, yeah. you ain't worried about nothing yet. You know what I'm saying? You old enough to know right from wrong, yeah. but you still young enough to be, you know what I'm saying? Not yeah. privy to a whole lot of foolishness. Yeah. But that was really what that dream was about. Like, I knew people just going to look at him and be like, oh, he hooping with the homies. Like, I ain't even the one shooting. Like, right. that ain't even me with the rock or whatever. Yeah. But um, I felt like that picture would be like, okay, this is kids. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying that's why I say your your pure self. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, bro. I might be going a little too deep, mm -hmm. but I remember you saying that uh, you had the self doubt because of age. It was yeah. almost as if like yeah. local was feeding that inner child within you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. that creative like the, the well wordplay wise, what I was trying to do was like if if I was like talking to my younger self. Mm -hmm. mm. Or like my son, because mm. you know mm. then he could hear it. if he can decipher some of the words. Like I don't, you know, yeah. try to control what he listen to and nothing like that. So right. if he up on the wordplay, he'll be. You know what I'm saying, yeah. But I love cool. how instead of fabricating it, mm -hmm. you gave him that real. But yeah. it wasn't like like you said, glorified. Mm -hmm. Like do what I did. Right. You know, it's like don't listen to what I say. Watch as I do. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But right. not every move. But I must also give you the lessons. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And speaking on that, man, like, how is it being a father and yeah, dope. balancing the music career? Oh, that's tough, though. 
Yeah. It's like uh, my oldest daughter, she be, you know what I'm saying? She be scribbling. Yeah. So, you know, you don't, you can never, you always got to bump them up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Never bump them down. Yeah. So she might, she <laughs> might write something and it'll be like, you said that because you didn't have nothing to say. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the feelings. You could have just stopped right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just thought of it. Yeah. Know, just think a little more. Like, yeah. Really let yourself go in it or whatever. Because mm-hmm. she's smart. Yeah. She don't get wordy. She won't use a big word and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? She's going to keep it real simple. Right. But she's a child. Point. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I get it. Yeah. But more times than not, like, I might just, like, whenever I see my kids and whatnot, mm-hmm. they'll be, uh, especially like my younger daughters, they'll be like, bongo. Like, yeah. they might say, like, an ad lib from the music. I'll just put my head in and yeah. start laughing or whatever. Yeah. Or, like, they'll wait till they get around me, start watching videos. Who that? Who that? Mm-hmm. But, it's cool though. Yeah. yeah, you know, I guess it's easier to balance because like I they've been along the whole ride. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It ain't like I just started having kids. Right. They was in the studio session. I bro, no smoking today. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, Facts. You was in there getting it. Facts, man. They know how. Like, I remember recording them. Like, y'all gotta be quiet. Yeah. And my daughter Naima, she go, everybody be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. Quick question, man. Mm-hmm. I noticed in um the verse for ego for sale. Right. You had a. Uh, you poof, dropped a lot of gems. Which daughter were you talking about when you said, my daughter know I'm the one? Something about Funyuns, right? Nah, nah, it wasn't about Funyuns. But I remember in the line, you was like, uh, you know, when you was, it's hard to write these verses with the tears on the phone mm-hmm. and um, rapping to my daughter because she know that I'm the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a layer. Yeah, my oldest. The oldest. She be the like, same one that, mm-hmm. uh, rapping. she be she be writing too. Yeah. So like sometimes I say something, she like, but it don't be like I'm not like a massive vocabulary type of rapper. It's yeah. just what I say. Mm-hmm. So it's like she's still kind of trying to understand how personal she want to be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she in high school. So. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up, man. And all that's really like the funnest thing, man. For real though, the funnest. That's awesome. like the, the funnest thing about rapping, bro. Yeah. When people hear the like the people that don't know you, I mean, well, the people that really know you, yeah. And they hear and then they know what you're talking about. Like mm-hmm. that's when it. Yeah. It's a good feeling. Yeah, man. Yeah. Nah. And they, then they can really know, like, okay, yeah, you don't just rap, like, mm-hmm. you for real, you you live in this. Yeah, like, I remember one of your songs. I forgot the name, bro, but I heard Nikosi in the intro, and he was just like, bro, the fact that you really live this shit. That's hold on. Yeah, that's hold and on. then oh, damn, that is hold on. Mm-hmm. And then um, he was like, yeah, bro, keep all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? And um, shit like that, man. We need more organic shit that. Yeah, hits the soul bro Mm -hmm. and that's one thing i've noticed just about your artistry bro like you tap into that soul and you know how to just be you and that's it like it's not you trying to be somebody else or trying to be what's hot like Mm -hmm. it's literally your own world every single song bro and like you said what i love about it is it caters to the ones who may not even know you, like mm-hmm. outside looking in, because right, right. they feel like they're getting to know you. Mm-hmm. But the ones who really know you, it makes them proud. It makes mm-hmm. us proud because it's like, damn, like that nigga really lived that mm-hmm. shit. That's the fucking truth. Mm-hmm. So shout out to you on that, mm-hmm. man. So we talked about local. You know what I mean? What's what's next, man? I know you got a lot of shit cooking. You be moving. Mm-hmm. You the silent assassin out here. Yeah, man. I'm about to say, what well, the next one should be 88. I'm gonna okay. say I'm gonna say 88. 88. Yeah, cause I mean okay. I'm pretty much done, but I be on some working on three at a time, mm-hmm. getting beats from different people, trying to. Yeah. So what was the inspiration behind 88 as far as the title? Um, my birth year. Yeah. This one is for me, cause it's like I'm still kind of weaning off from that emotional roller coaster of doing local for real. Cause yeah. like a lot of that stuff was like happening right then or stuff that the decisions made affects me now mm. you know what i'm saying mm. so it's like you start picturing yourself differently yeah you know what i'm saying and yeah. that's why i did 88 well that's yeah that's why 88 is next bro yeah because i gotta get this one out the way like on the mental side like mm. and the really mac miller dying kind of put me in that yeah like he was telling us all along if you was really listening to them bars you know what i'm saying you could just Get it out though. Like while I'm still here, I can just get it out, and then I don't have to feel like that. You know what I'm mm. Manifestations, mm-hmm. real, bro. Mm-hmm. Power of the tongue. 
talk. But nah, that ass, he he really was like telling us, mm-hmm. um, like real rap. Mac yeah. Miller warned me a couple times. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. not like I know him, but knowing his music, like, mm-hmm. nah, I don't do that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying Mac going through that man. He done told you like, mm-hmm. right up. And we need that. Yeah, and that that goes yeah. back to instead of it being glorified, it's just real, mm-hmm. you know? But like how you said, when it comes to like, you know, your seeds, man, like when you give them the game, they know what to do mm-hmm. and also what not to do. Right, and right. we as like just adults, we got to learn to put our egos to the side. Right. Cause mm-hmm. you know, we want to be right, right, like right. that picture perfect mm-hmm. in a sense, but we all know that can't, that, that's not real. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, I just like be real with you. you know? I didn't mean to cut you. No, you good. Go ahead. Just like um in in doing ego for sale. Yeah. Like you know, local was done. Yeah. And like I said, I'm still dealing with that roller coaster. Yeah. So I was like thinking of ego for sale. Like if if I was an item, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? What would I be selling you? Mm-hmm. Like, as far as my ego goes, and yeah. it's like, well, damn, do you really got one? Because the shit I talk about, you know what I'm saying? But then. At the same time, it's like you do, cause that's what the people who buy music go through. Ooh, you know what I'm saying like little kid gonna go get moms to give them the nine ninety nine, you know, or just put it on your car, like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever service they listen to. Yeah. So I be looking at it like, well, if it, if I could get in a hard copy situation, mm-hmm. I would be covered. You know what I'm saying? Damn. You don't want to make. Music for a demographic of people who not haven't lived enough life to really even value you. Because mm-hmm. I mean, with with kids, they on now. Yeah. So yeah, this month you might go crazy with the numbers, and mm-hmm. then next year that same song ain't shit to them. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, my mom's is still playing Mary J. Blige from yes. before the newly released. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't yeah. going nowhere. Like yeah, it's. People dead and gone who music still play because they still. took a certain amount of attention to making it. Like mm-hmm. that's where I want to be. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot man. of people play the old rapper. Man, I want to be common, bro. Yeah. I don't want to be somebody that died early. Mm-hmm. Especially if I mean by somebody else's hand, because of what I'm saying. Like I mean, a lot of that is happening now, mm-hmm. man. Hey, motherfucker, um Snooty Wild just passed away. And he was out in Houston, he'd be out there. Mm-hmm. And that's great. That's how I be. It's where yeah. you at. Right. The fact he's from Memphis. Where you at? But it's just, yo, it's crazy. I don't know what the hell. It's almost like as you, I'm rapping because I want to be successful and have things to pass down. Like this is another option, like among the many things I try to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would want to jeopardize it with something that's like, yeah, you the man now, mm-hmm. today, this month. But you, this is go back to that, just pumping them out. Now I'm saying anything. Yeah. Homie made some joint. Oh yeah, that joint banging right there. Right. Shit, he hit the billboards with it too. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and do me like three like that. One out of three got to land. I'm gonna put them all out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now people don't like you. Yeah. Now you just said something to ruffle a feather, and it ain't because you coming from a personal standpoint. You just mm-hmm. talking shit. Yeah. Like. Yeah. That's bad business. Yeah. You know, for yourself. For your health. <laughs> Shit crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. That shit wild, man. But <clears throat> we just need more people who just genuinely don't give a fuck. Because right. at the end of the day, they're going to stay true to themselves mm-hmm. and they're going to give people that real. And that's All what right. we need more of, man. But going back to after you saying with 88, you feel like that's more of the aftermath, the emotional roller coaster. Where would you say your mental health is at currently right now, bro? I'm good. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the present moment, I'm good. I'm probably making a mistake. You know how you kind of take a little stumble or whatever, and it's mm-hmm. like, nah, fuck it. I'm just diving into a whole bunch of shit. Like, yeah. I'm trying to stay working, stay moving. Yeah, Almost not paying it attention. Like, I address it within myself, but it's mm-hmm. like, what we really got to work on is outward expression. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why I'm on mm-hmm. some shit. Like, if I don't do 88, like, I would be jinxing myself. Like, for yeah. being, like, as far as what I'm trying to remain true to in my music, I want to be a realist. Mm-hmm. Within my situation, like I can't yeah. speak on, I can say things about current events, what's going on in the world, you know, of right. course, but my opinion is just an opinion. Yeah. But I could be truthful about myself yes. and I could touch somebody. Yeah. So if I'm doing that, mm. then why would I not do 88, bro? Mm. Like, so that's back to the source. And it's yeah. crazy because 88 is 
Eight, eight is one of my favorite numbers. Right. That's a powerful number. And I'm going to give you a metaphor on how I feel like what's happening with you right now. So, you know, figure eight, you know what I mean? It's all connected, right? Mm -hmm. But you knock the eight over. What's that? It's, like it's, it's, it's forever, bro. Right. That's it's forever. forever. So that's how I feel about with your shit, man. Just a spiritual connection to it mm. all, bro. Even if you get knocked down, bro, this shit's still forever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Real and time. even in the midst of those times, beautiful art is created. Mm -hmm. And that's what matters, man. That's that's the key, man. Like yeah. if once you can figure out how you can make it to where you never die. Mm. Like I done what's your time capsule mm. looking like? You know what I'm saying? Facts. Cause we all want to have families, people that we're going to pass things to. Yeah. So what would my time, well, what would be one of the things in my time capsule? Yeah. I'm going to lay whole movies out for them. You know what I'm saying? Damn, man. Um, so speaking of time capsules, right? With how far you've came and where you at now and everything that you've endured and you know what I'm saying? The lessons that you've learned, because you know it's always win to learn, never lose. Right. What advice would you give to your younger self with who you are today. Hmm. I'm gonna say take the deal. Nah, nah. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Hey, this shit is expensive though, low Yo, key. Man. <laughs> right. It's like when you don't be doing, like when you be thinking to yourself, like, I could be doing more. It's like, yeah. Bro, it's costing me like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I would probably tell my younger self, like, just be certain of yourself. Like, mm. don't be the one to cut you off. Cause I'm like my thing initially used to be like I write whole books of music. Yeah. Go studio forty dollars an hour, spending all types of ridiculous ass money. Yeah. And not even put it out. Like mm. just on some ah right, man, look, music like I said, music don't die. Yeah. So what they ain't hip to now, it might become a time when somebody gets hip to you and then they got all of this to go back on. Mm -hmm. That's more and more, you know, yeah. It's all benefiting you and then residuals. <clears throat> oh God. If you in order. Oh God. But um yeah, like I said, that's the key, man. Yeah, that's that's the key for me. But yeah. staying true, but mm -hmm. like still. I think believing. early on, mm -hmm. I was so like I said, caught up in well, what you think they like. Yeah, I wasn't. It, it was a point where it was probably like four people I was hitting up asking them right. if they liked it or not. Mm -hmm. I'm more or less in the house beating my head on the microphone, thinking if they like this, if they will, is this what they like? Versus like, bro, come on, man, Wu Tang yeah. wasn't like. Man, I wonder if they're gonna like this. Yeah. They was like, Yeah. They gonna like this shit. Like Facts. straight up. And that's how you gotta be. Like, cause it's a it's a market for everybody. Like, it is. Especially now. Especially now, man. Yeah, yeah. Man, we covered a lot, bro. Oh, Great yeah. conversation as for always, sure. man. But um let the people know where they can reach you, tap into you, oh, man. Listen, man. listen to your stories and grow with you, bro. Um my music is on all streaming platforms. Bongo Mo. <clears throat> man. Every guest that I have over, bro, I, well, I can't consider you a guest, you fam, but you feel me? I always make sure, man, I always give them their flowers and gratitude. And man, just as I was telling you earlier, bro, I am a genuine fan, bro. Appreciate and that. I'm real enough to say that shit because a lot of niggas, they, they fuck with you, but from afar mm -hmm. type shit. And that yeah. shit is weird, bro. You feel yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. But, um, you man, get in there, man, you feel me? Get in there, bro. You feel me? But um, bruh, just 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 the work you've been putting in over the years, because it's been yeah. a long time, yeah. you know? And what I really love about you and your artistry, bruh, is you've always been tenacious, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? To where you never let your current circumstances stop you. Mm -hmm. You ain't never made an excuse. Yeah, you yeah. never said, dang, I got five kids, bro. Mm -hmm. I can't do this shit, I'ma hang it. You said, no, nigga, that's gonna make me go harder. Yeah, you you feel me? Real life shit happening. Mm -hmm. You gonna deal with this shit as a man, but you gonna, those experiences that you learn right. from, you damn sure gonna let us know mm -hmm. what went down yeah, and yeah. how we could learn from it, how you can learn from it. And just to have somebody, man, who like yourself, I could consider a friend, mm -hmm. like don't get me wrong, we we work together. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. We can we can do what we got to do when it comes time to it. But just the fact that like if anything is going down, we know like we one phone call mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Just yeah. I was telling y'all, man. Like next time when we get the queen on the podcast, mm -hmm. bro. If y'all need to spend the night, mm -hmm. you feel me? As I was saying earlier, bro. Like. I am genuinely proud of you. 
You know what I'm saying? With just the work that you put in and Appreciate just who you are, not even just as an artist, bro, but as a man and what you represent. We need more of that, especially within our community. You feel me? We need somebody who's able to say, you know what? This is who the fuck I am. Mm -hmm. This is what it's about. If you fuck with me, cool. But if you don't, keep it pushing. Yeah, There's plenty of other motherfuckers you can fuck with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um. We need more of that, bro. And you always been, like I said earlier, you always been that connector where you knew how to bridge the gap because you always stayed true to who you were, but you still know how to walk into different rooms and remain yourself. And that's why people are attracted to you right. and your energy because you don't go into rooms and be like, oh, I'm trying to be like them. Mm -hmm. The analogy you gave earlier, like I see everybody on mm -hmm. the left side. Let me go over here on the right, right. side. You know what I mean? And um, man, we just need more of that, bro. But for real, keep up the good work out here. So we proud of you. We rooting for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? You always got my love, bro. Appreciate it. You know, and um, you know, fam first. No pun intended. You oh, yeah. feel me? But thank y'all for tuning in for the third episode of Kickback at Dames. We gonna keep this shit rolling. Got my nigga Bongo Mo. You feel me? And y'all definitely check him out, man. He's got some dope shit. And y'all, we're going to keep this shit pushing, man. But love, peace. Peace.